This video is gonna give you a few ideas. One, what the Vazen for RF mount will be capable of and what the crop factors will look like. Two, what the focal lengths are gonna be after you do that crop. And then three, just the overall look, uh, everything from the sharpness to the contrast to uh, the light streaks on there. And then we will do a slight comparison with the Sure uh, 35 millimeter. But yeah, before we get too far into anything, I'm gonna roll a quick film that I made with this lens. Again, just a disclaimer. This did come off the mount within the first five minutes of filming. So the rest of the filming, I'm just holding the lens on there as best as I could. So don't judge it too much. After that, I'll talk a little bit about the lens and then we'll jump into the comparison footage. So enjoy this little crappy film. to Taylor Edwards for linking me with Vazen. Uh, they sent me out this prototype of the 28 millimeter with an RF mount. This did come off the mount. So as I said, it is a prototype and so the mount is just glued on. I had it on my DJI RS2 and within the first like five minutes of using it, started to do cartwheels and backflips and stuff while I was holding it and it threw the lens off the camera. It literally just, it's not just like Elmer's glue or something like that. So this thing was flipping out enough to just throw the lens off. Luckily I had the Freewell variable ND filter on it. So it did break uh, my filter, but I rather this break and then this prototype <laughs> break. Well, shatter, I should say, cause it did break. But yeah, for the rest of the shoe, I just held it up to uh, the Komodo and tried my best. The issue is if it's not perfectly mounted on there, the, the sharpness is all off and the focus is off and everything. So for this whole test, I tried my best to keep the lens up to the camera properly. The only test where I could like legit hold it up nice and tight against the camera was for the sharpness test, which you'll see towards the end of the comparison. But still, even then having like an actual production RF mount whenever they come out, uh, it's probably gonna be a little bit sharper. But I would say this is under the category of affordable anamorphic lenses. Pretty much right now, the the Sure ones are the lowest price ones that you can get. The Sure anamorphics are 1.33x stretch. And so you don't get like a super insane anamorphic look out of it. There's a hack that you could do, which I did on mine, is you insert this anamorphic bokeh filter into the lens. With the Vazen, it's a 1.8x stretch. And so you're getting that legit like classic anamorphic stretch to it. And the light streaks in it uh, react a little bit more natural to whatever the light source is. Um, so you get a little bit more of a natural look out of it. I would say that if you're into like a very sterile, clean, normal type of look, the sewer kind of gets that side of the job done. Uh, and then if you add that insert into there, you do get more of an anamorphic look out of it. But these are very clean lenses. And then the Vazen is a little bit more of that classic look. The sharpness is a little bit softer than the Suri, but the Suri is actually like insanely sharp. Like it's possibly even a little bit sharper than the Sigma 18 and 35, which we all know is insanely sharp as it is. And then that's the whole point of us adding diffusion filters is just to try to take that clinical look off of a lens. So with the Vazen, you probably don't even need to run a diffusion filter just because it has like that natural softness to it. Uh, the contrast is lower on it. Again, that's the whole point of diffusion filters. So let's jump into the important part now. It's just all of the comparison shots. Again, Majority of the tests, it's me putting the mount on the camera and me trying to hold the lens up perfectly. Take all these comparisons with a grain of salt, but, or salt of grain, grain of salt. I'm horrible with all these analogies, but anyways. First, we're gonna go over coverage, then we're going to go into crops and what your equivalent focal lengths are. Now, it's not gonna be a super scientific test, but I'm gonna try my best to kind of make assumptions using some tools that will show up in here in a minute. After that, I will show you guys the difference between the bokeh, between the Surrey 1.33 crop with the anamorphic uh, bokeh insert and then also the Sigma and then we will test those three lenses for sharpness All right, so now I got the crop ratios in here So you see the full readout of the sensor is a 1.33 X crop and you see we do have vignetting You can see the inside of the lens now We'll see how much we can get rid of that when we're 
trying to crop the image into a scope image. Uh, you see the 16 by 9 in the 6K is a 1.42 crop. So 5K, this is the mode I use the most because I can get 48 frames per second out of this, is a 1.6X crop. There is a tiny bit of vignetting left. And then 4K mode to 2X crop, you see all of our vignetting's gone. And then the 2K mode, uh, we have four times crop and obviously it's gone there. Also, don't pay attention to focus. As you guys saw, the lens is broke and so I'm just trying my best to hold up the lens on there. Now let's check out the R5 real quick. And then after that, we'll go into like sizing up for scope and getting rid of the vignettes. So you see, this is the full readout. This is the 8K DCI uh, on the Canon R5. And there's crazy vignetting. Like you can see practically half inside of the lens. And the crop mode, I personally use the crop mode mostly on the R5 because it gives me zero overheating issues, at least so far. You also get all your uh, high speed frame rates too if you need it, but it's just easier to use. And then I can use the Sigma 18 and 35 on there too. So you see there's minimal vignetting on here and it is, does look crooked on here just because again, on the lens to the camera. Now, this is where things start getting a bit technical. So you see we're in a DCI scope and a 4K timeline. We can see how far we have to zoom in to get an actual scope crop on here. And then right after we do that, we'll go in and figure out what the actual horizontal focal length ends up being for each of these crop modes. Uh, Cause that's where it gets kind of confusing. Let's just zoom in, figured out that usually just around 1.430 of a zoom gets us a full crop for the scope. So you see now all of our footage is cropped so it fits the full crop on uh, the scope. Now let's figure out what our actual horizontal marks are. Cause again, the whole point of a 1.8 is to use on more of a four by three sensor and that gives you like a perfect scope stretch. When you're using it more on a super 35 or DCI uh, type of sensor, we're getting too much of a stretch. I know some people like just posting it like that. I hate that look though, especially because majority of the content is watched on a phone or tablet. And so having that hardcore stretch, like you could barely see what the image is doing. If any of you guys are into like anamorphic stuff, you most likely know who Tito is. He runs the anamorphic on a budget YouTube channel and website and all that. This is his tool right here on a 28 millimeter 1.8 stretch anamorphic on a 16 by nine sensor we're getting about a 16 millimeter horizontal field of view. Now, if we change this to a 1.3X crop on a sensor, we're getting a 20 millimeter, but that's if we don't crop. But since we're trying to zoom in our footage to match a scope crop, I'm just going to act as if uh, the sensor's being cropped to a four by three. So you see now we're getting an accurate scope crop on here. So basically our lens turns into a 28 millimeter. So now when we go in 5K mode, it turns into a 1.6 crop mode. So let's see what that turns into. So it's 25 millimeter, but again, when we go into crop in to create a scope crop, it becomes a 33 millimeter. Now let's just do a 2X on here. Let's do a four by three. So in the 4K mode, we're getting a 41 millimeter. Now I believe the Canon R5's crop mode is a 1.6 as well. Uh, so again, once you start zooming in that footage, we're basically getting a 33 millimeter. So now let's just go look at the R5. So this is the 8K, let's zoom it in until we get rid of the crop. So now you see we're getting a full scope crop, but we still have vignetting. So with the 8K full frame mode, you're gonna have to keep zooming in. There goes most of our vignetting. So basically at 1.9, you almost have to do a two times crop. So it's probably better just to use the crop mode. Uh, so you see, let's start zooming in. Let's just zoom in until we get rid of the vignette. Pretty much there, that's part usable. Let's just do it to 1.1. So in the Canon R5 crop mode, it's actually as sharp as an 8K. I've seen tests, I haven't done personal tests, but I've seen a few videos of people testing it and it looks as good as uh, the 8K down sample in the 4K mode on the R5, which overheats and also doesn't give you uh, higher frame rates either. So you see on the R5 crop mode with the 28 millimeter Vazen 1.8 stretch anamorphic with the 1.1 zoom in, we're getting rid of the vignette. Let's just get rid of that. And you see this will be with the full mode. Um, again, don't pay attention to the sharpness because the lens was barely on the camera. Now let's start looking at the vibe of this lens. Um, again, on this test, I'm trying to do so much stuff at once and I'm having to hold this lens up against the camera. So the sharpness isn't the most accurate on this. There's We're getting some like chromatic aberrations that are worse than what it would usually be just because the lens isn't perfectly on the camera. Uh, when I do sharpness tests, I do my 
best to hold it up to get max sharpness. But again, don't pay attention to the sharpness or the chromatic aberration on here. This is more about the bokeh that we're getting on this lens. Before I zoom in the, the rest of this footage though, here's the Sures. 35 millimeter at 1.8. You can see how much warmer this looks. I shot this in raw, so I'll be able to fix this, but this lens is really warm. I don't mind that at all. Uh, I don't mind changing my color balance in post, um, but overall you can just see it. Now I'm gonna go and zoom in this footage for the rest of this test. Okay, so this is the Vazen 28 millimeter F2.2. And this is the Sure at 1.8. Again, the Sure is gonna look way sharper just because I can't hold that lens up properly to the to the camera on the Vazen lens. But you can see overall the look when you put that anamorphic bokeh filter from Tito, again, that same guy who made that tool that we just used, he also makes these bokeh inserts for the Suri lenses, which gives you more of an anamorphic look on the Suri lenses because they're only a 1.3x stretch. And so they don't look super anamorphic until you uh, put those inserts in and it's not that hard honestly but uh, let me go and fix the white balance on this Suraid. Also another side effect of that insert is it does lower uh, your light input by stop. So the Suraid will be darker too. So let's just compare these two real quick. So this is the 2.2 versus the 1.8. You see that bokeh inserts kind of helping that Suraid to keep up with the Vazen's 1.8 stretch look. Uh, here's a Suraid at f2 now. So the one issue with the bokeh insert on the Sure is once you start closing down the iris on the lens, the insert pretty much gets covered up. So you start losing that stretch effect on the Sure. So as we start closing down the Sure, you'll see the Vazen keeps its anamorphic look. So already at the 2.8 marks, you can see the Sure is starting to look a little bit more normal. Now here's the Vazen at F4. And now the Sura F4. So you see the Sura is starting to look kind of normal here. And then the Vazen still has the anamorphic look in the background because it does have a 1.8 stretch. Um, here's the Vazen at 5.6. And you see it still has the anamorphic look to it. And the F8, it still kind of has the anamorphic look to it, even though the bokeh is being limited down. So that's the one upside to having a 1.8 lens. And then again, on the Sura F4, this is almost just the standard lens. And then with the bokeh insert, you see how much it stretches that background. So that insert helps a lot. Again, shout out to Tito. Like he's the anamorphic king right now of like giving us info, especially noobs like me. And then this is the same test, but with the Sigma, this is Sigma 18 millimeters, now 28 millimeters and at 35 millimeters, you see how sterile it looks. It looks really boring and clean compared to these anamorphic lenses. Like here's the Vazen at 2.8 and this is wide open too. So you see how much bokeh we're getting out of there, but still like I just, the anamorphic look wins for me. And again, don't judge the color on that. Like it's, um, that's not what that test's about. Now sharpness test. This is what I was really excited about. Um, so you see this, the Sigma 18 at 35. We have the Surrey 35 millimeter at 1.8 and then the Vazen at 2.2. Uh, now I'm going to go in and match all these real quick. Uh, I got to cool down the Sure uh, by a thousand Kelvin and then I'm going to zoom in on uh, the Vazen shot so the crops match. But real quick just so you guys can see what each frame looks like. Okay we have everything matched now so let's just start going through this. So you see that's the Sigma 1.8, the Sure at 1.8 and the Vazen at 2.2. Also, don't judge the dust on here. I live in a very, very, very dry, dusty town, so I literally have to dust every day. I might have missed the past few days, so don't judge. Uh, you see the contrast, and the, the Suris are very like clean, anamorphic lenses. I love them, but the Vazen pretty much gives you like that anamorphic like look that I think most of us want. They both have their place and time to be used, though, honestly. This, so again, this is the Sigma 18-35. This is the Sure at 1.8 and the Vazen. So the Vazen's really hard for me to focus because I do not have a seven inch monitor with me. So when you're de-stretching 1.8 on a five inch monitor, you can't really see anything. So I did my best and again, I am holding the lens up to the camera to try to do all these tests. So most likely the, this lens is probably sharper than the <laughs> results I'm getting. So I apologize, but uh, hopefully this gives you guys some uh, idea. Okay, now we're doing 2.2. So this is the Sigma 1835 at 2.2. You can start seeing the texture 
on the box here a little bit. This is the Syria at 2.2, and then this is the Vase at 2.2. Now let's do the 2.8. So the Sigma at 2.8, the Sure at 2.8. It's a pretty sharp looking lens. And now the Vazen at 2.8. Again, again, again. I'm sure if I didn't break this lens, it'd probably be a little bit sharper. But so I forgot to do f4 on the Sure, but we have the Sigma at f4 right here. See, it's pretty sharp. And on the Vazen, this is the F4. So the Vazen F4 kind of looks like the Suray's at 2.2. That Suray lens is insanely sharp. Like it's scary sharp for being an anamorphic. Uh, and you see, once we zoom out, the Vazen F4 looks sharp uh, zoomed out. Even at 2.8 or 2.2, like this is plenty sharp enough for me. Um, I would probably favor shooting at 2.8 on this lens though. And then 5.6. The rest of the test will just be on the Vazen. You see at 5.6, it starts getting pretty sharp. And then at F8, uh, that's plenty sharp enough. I personally like the 2.8 on here. We go and just change the ISO real quick. Let me just show you guys the results. The Vazen now with the ISO is corrected. Uh, it doesn't look as low contrast. Like I personally love how that 2.2 looks. Uh, but the 2.8 does get it just about clean enough for any type of work for me, honestly. Now F4 f5.6 so the f8 is looking rough obviously because the kimono is at 1600 no, with no noise reduction so don't judge that um, but then you can also see the bokeh when we go from f8 to a 2.2 i love the look of this lens so hey guys that's pretty much it for that uh, again not a scientific test uh there's a lot of uh, workarounds I had to do for this video. So uh, once again, take all these results with the grain of salt, uh, with the grain of sand. Um, man, I, I should really like study up on analogies and sayings and stuff. Anyways, um, yeah, just don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, just overall, this should give you a rough idea what to expect from an RF Vazen mount. <laughs> That's it, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. I don't know how much longer I'll have this lens for. Again, I did break it. The Vazen peeps weren't mad. Thank you, guys. I apologize again. I'll probably try to figure out a way to glue this back on myself, but I'm kind of terrified to do so because it might just fall off again. Um, just because you guys know I like to use my gear kind of hard. So but yeah, guys, if you have any questions or anything you want me to test out before I have to return this lens, uh, just let me know and I will try to get those tests done. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that.